20 years ago, as now, the world was getting ready for something really special. As the clock struck midnight on New Year's Eve 1999, we would be entering a whole new millennium. And it was set to be the biggest party mankind had ever seen. And this included your local pub, which you probably went in every weekend, suddenly feeling justified in charging £25 a ticket for you to sit in the same seat and drink with the same friends that you had every other weekend for the rest of the year, just because it was the Millennium Night. Yes, this really happened. Nightclubs flew in superstar DJs from around the world and paid them the price of a nice house in central London to perform a one-hour set before flying them off to the next country, with ticket prices to match. Now, most people I knew instead stayed at home and got their friends around. And in fact, that night is generally regarded as being the beginning of the end of the super club culture in the UK. I can still remember the sense of optimism as we moved into the new millennium. The 20th century had undoubtedly seen some incredible innovations, but it was also a century of lots of pain and suffering, not least by the two most bloody wars in human history taking place in the first half. And there was a big sense of looking forward to undoubtedly better times in the 21st century. We had a millennium party that night, and being well into my DJing in my teens, I was on the decks, and probably like every other DJ in the world, when the clock struck midnight, I mixed into Prince's 1999, a song which, if you paid attention to the lyrics, was actually about the idea of impending apocalypse. As I put the needle down on my trusty Technics turntable and mixed the song in, and the chimes of Big Ben sounded on the TV, I still remember feeling a little bit nervous as to what might happen next. Gabby, we mustn't forget that with all this excitement going on, there are some very, very worried people all over the world. The millennium bug, has it struck or hasn't it? 25, 35 minutes from now, we'll know what's happening in this country, what's happened over all the rest of the world. Those bugs are going to crawl all over our computers and make the planes fall out of the sky. As the world danced at the dawn of the new millennium, there was a sense of making this the best party ever, because there was a somewhat perceived chance that, in the worst case scenario, it could actually be our last. The Millennium Bug, as it was nicknamed here in the UK, or just known as Y2K, or the 2000 Bug, meant that some computers, and nobody knew quite how many, could fail as the year 1999 went into 2000. The reason for this is that so many computer systems written before the 90s used a two-digit abbreviation of the year to save on memory space. So 1999 was defined as just 99, which was fine, but when 2000 ticked around, the date on these systems would then just be 00. zero. And what would happen then? Well, obviously, some data-critical systems might then misinterpret the date as 1900, therefore leading to some potentially catastrophic failures. On doing a bit of research, the earliest reported incident I could find actually dated back to 1988, when a delivery of tinned meat was rejected by a supermarket stocking system as the date on it was 00. zero. The system assumed the meat was outdated by 88 years and refused to stock it. These minor issues would become more prevalent over the next decade, unless something was done. Now, as someone who's always been a really keen technologist, 1999 sticks in my mind as a golden year for technology. I was still using my Y2K bug-proof Amiga 1200 as my main machine, of course, and obviously I did check it, everything ticked over just fine, but also that year, I got my first Windows 98 PC, and for the first time, I finally had internet access in my bedroom at home. And then, services like Napster were helping to force the old industries into the new century, systems like the Sega Dreamcast were released, the first iMac G3 machines were starting to appear in our computer lab at college. To me, 99 just felt like a really exciting time for technology and really felt like the next millennium was going to be something special. But not everybody felt the same. How could the omission of two simple digits affect the destiny of all humankind? Y2K, what does it mean? How will it affect you your family, your community, your nation, our world. Y2K, how can we prepare individually, 
How can we work together as global neighbors to make the best of whatever may occur before and after January 1st of the year 2000? Y2K, from its historical roots to its possible effects on the future of civilization. Effects that are so complex that perhaps only chaos theory could calculate the multiple ramifications of what may occur. Back then, there was still a healthy dose of fear and distrust of computers. Estimates in the US put the figure at around 10% of the population who believed that the Millennium Bug would actually lead to Armageddon. There were people who had stockpiled food and built bunkers in their gardens to survive the incoming nuclear winter. When they believe that silos will all accidentally release their nuclear missiles at midnight on New Year's Eve. There was a big fear that with the ever-reliance of these systems, that the computers would be so confused they would shut down completely. But in the end, it seemed like not a lot actually happened. Now there were some systems that did fail. The most tragic I could find were two babies who were aborted after incorrect risk assessments for Down syndrome were sent to the baby's mothers as the system wasn't patched properly and miscalculated their ages. In Japan, alarm sounded at a nuclear power plant at two minutes after midnight on January 1st, 2000, which must have been pretty scary. And there are also some more amusing errors, such as a customer being fined over $91,000 for the late return of a videotape. Over 100 years late, according to their Y2K glitch computer. But the real reason nothing major happened is not because there was never any threat. It was really due to the many hardworking people in the IT industry who literally worked around the clock, getting us ready for the switchover and fixing the errors after months and months of testing. Like many governments around the world, the UK started a national campaign called Action 2000 to get the country ready for the millennium switchover. In more recent years, a British politician, Bernard Jenkin, spoke out in 2018 saying that he believed the Millennium Bug wasn't worth all the fuss it received and actually named it as Project Fear. And as you can imagine, this spurred lots of angry IT workers to reply on Twitter and lots of them came through to an article on the BBC by Rory Kellen Jones. And even from my memory back then, it did seem like everyone I knew that worked in IT actually spent either all of New Year's Eve 1999 in their office, patching bugs, watching systems, or just messing around and getting paid because they'd done all the work in advance, or even logging into their work machines from their laptop for a quick check after midnight when they were at house parties. 20 years later, we can look back on it and make jokes now about how the world got through Y2K and maybe even laugh at those people that built bunkers in their back garden and stockpiled enough food to last the rest of their lives. But the fact is, major catastrophe was avoided as the problem was dealt with properly for the most part, meaning it felt like nothing major happened. But we could actually be closer to the next IT-related disaster now than the Millennium Bug. As the Y2K bug is now more than 20 years behind us, the next one is actually less than 20 years in our future, and some are predicting this could be an even bigger problem. The year 2038 problem, as it's politely referred to, is a similar issue which is set to strike in 18 years' time. The idea is that when time hits 3.14am and 7 seconds on the 19th of March 2038, computers running 32-bit systems will run out of space to store the time based on the Unix time system which counts up from the year 1970. When it overflows, systems won't be able to tell the difference between the current time and the year 1970. This was actually demonstrated by YouTube back in 2014 accidentally. When the huge song Gangnam Style topped a view count which exceeded the 32-bit capacity, YouTube's system couldn't cope and actually freezed the views on the video. It turned out their system was still based on the original 32-bit number from its inception, meaning that a view count that hit the limit of just over 2.1 million plays wasn't counted anymore. Luckily, it was quickly changed to a 64-bit system and Sai can now bask in the glory of his views, which now stand at over 3.4 billion as of New Year's Eve 2019. So should we worry? 
Well, we can be sure that the IT industry, including many of the same IT workers who helped avoid the Millennium bug becoming a disaster, are also working on the Y2K38 bug already. So don't have nightmares and have a happy new year. And if you've enjoyed this video, you'll probably want to check out my weekly retro gaming and technology podcast. New episodes released every Friday from wherever you normally get your podcasts from or the website theretrohour.com. And we've actually released a little best of 2019 if you want a nice easy way to catch up on our highlights of the last 12 months. And if you've liked this video, why not check out a couple more on my channel and maybe hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in 2020.